Hey everybody, welcome back to the Nidus Anarchy series. I'm your host, Adam, CIO and co-founder of Nidus, and today I want to talk about how Grok just eliminated a crap ton of jobs. So I've been talking about forever about how AI is going to be replacing jobs starting from the bottom up. And the first things we talked about were fast food, right? We were going to say like AI is going to replace fast food. That's happened. There's Wendy's now that's beta testing an AI drive through for real time response and ordering. So there goes your drive through tellers gone. Welcome to Wendy's. What would you like? Can I have a uh, chocolate frosty? Which size for the chocolate frosty? Medium. Can I get you anything else today? No, thank you. Great. Please pull up to the next window. Now, what's interesting though is we've uh, the the kind of the analogy I've always been using or the metaphor or kind of use case, I guess, is the best thing to say. It would be to replace a call center because call centers are massively expensive in the identity access world. That's one of the biggest things that we try to do is to reduce the amount of calls into the call center because call centers are so expensive. Hence why we want self-service as everywhere as much as possible, right? So the big thing was to have a real time interaction with somebody that's on that phone call to deliver them results is going to be computationally expensive in the sense that if you want to have a real time AI LLM that's interacting with a client, that means it has to, listen to the words they're saying, flip that into text, then run that into the LLM to figure out an answer, return back a result, flip it into audio that sounds like a human being, and then return that back to the user in real time. And the slowest part about all of this is the AI interaction, because when these different LLMs are returning the responses, they're just too slow. And because of that, you have a massive delay, which means if there's no real time answers coming back from these LLMs, it's not going to be feasible yet. But it was always a matter of time because we're thinking, well, if you threw a data center behind it and massive compute power, I mean, Facebook had 350,000 of processors that cost 45 grand each just to train their Llama 3 model. So it's not like they're not doing it. It's just, it's so expensive. You're not going to do it to replace a call center. That's not as expensive. Now enter Grok. And now I'm not talking about Grok Musk's X's LLM AI bot that's out there, which is also awesome. I'm talking about Grok with a Q, G-R-O-Q. This company has created a LPU. So right now, if you have like a Mac or a regular computer and you try to do anything AI on it and process it with the CPU, it's horribly slow, painfully slow in the sense to where it's neat just to see how it works, but you're never gonna run anything good. You need GPUs, which is the graphical processing unit, to really kick off and do all this AI modeling and training and, and inference and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's why graphics cards and companies like Nvidia have just been killing it because everything in the AI space has all been GPU based. So the difference between like a CPU returning a result versus a GPU is the difference of like a 400 baud modem to a 2400 baud modem. Well, when Meta AI came out with Llama 3, it was so fast, we just jumped from the 2400 bottom modem to the 14.4. So instead of it writing it line by line, it's just dumping out pages. Grok has created an LPU, a language processing unit chip. It's an ASIC that is geared specifically to just deliver on LLMs. And it's amazingly fast. They've already integrated Llama 3. I think like what's in a week after Llama 3 was released, they integrated it online so you can play with it to see exactly how fast it is. Now the results are given in TPS or tokens per second, which is how many tokens per second does it return back? That determines the speed. So one of the fastest ones out there right now, like Meta AI is returning somewhere around 240, 250 tokens per second, which is really fast. Like I'm going to go through a demo here and show you, but Grok, is mind-blowingly fast. Grok has eliminated the real-time barrier. It is faster than real-time. So the the slowness, the, the weakest link of that whole let's replace a call center is no longer the AI model itself. Now it's just the network communication, which that's an easily solvable thing. So Grok has just eliminated anything where you need to have real-time delivery from AI results. So let's go ahead and show you how this kind of works. So first we're gonna start out with ChatGPT. And this is the one because I, after playing a lot with Llama 3, it's really good. 
I still think after a, a week now, it's been a little, little over a week of hardcore use. I've been using Chat GPT, Claude, and Meta. I've also played with Gemini as well, just to get some results. I think Gemini is the worst personally. Um, Meta AI it delivers really good results, but from a coding perspective and a lot of like hallucinations, GPT four still excels, especially GPT four Turbo. Um, it's still a leader it's, and enough to where Meta's given me like Llama three has given me wrong information. Um, to where I just can't trust it enough if I don't know what the answer is supposed to be. So it's delivering code. You know, I can read the code and be like, that's not right. And I can fix that part. And it's not that big of a deal. But if I'm asking like, hey, how do I do something? Some of the hallucinations are a little bit too far out there to where it's just not good enough results. So it's not really GPT-4 level in my opinion. So I still use GPT-4, but I right now, basically my workforce is I have GPT-4 and Meta AI with Llama 3 side by side. And I throw the question into both get the answers back because I'm waiting for GPT-4 to come back and Meta's pretty, you know, pretty fast. So I see those a lot quicker. And then a lot of times I might not get the same result, but I might get like an extra, like, oh, that's kind of a cool idea that Meta came up with, or it came up with a completely different way to code something. And then I can take that, dump it back into GPT and say, hey, fix this code. And then it fixes it and dumps it out and I use it that way. So that's another thing I've been doing. But Let's start out because what I really want to show you here is the speed at which these different AI systems can work at. So with GPT-4, we're going to start with this prompt. Now I have a complex prompt. It's not horribly complex, but it's going to give multi parts back, right? So here's the prompt that I'm going with. I have 4 million customer logins and 5,000 workforce logins. I currently have SiteMinder install, I have a typo in here, install er, I'm going to leave it, installed to protect all my internally hosted web applications. I'm switching to Fordrock Access Manager via Identity Cloud. Give me the details on how to convert from SiteMinder to Access Manager and also write a shell script to install and configure an identity gateway. The identity gateway should transform the AM auth headers to look like a SiteMinder header so that the background apps don't have to be updated. Assume any unknowns and deliver technical results with full code. Also make any recommendations for tuning the given for tuning the given environment for what? Uh, this is not right. <laughs> also make any recommendations for tuning the given Oh, for tuning, for tuning, comma, given the identity count. Okay, even I couldn't figure out what that meant. So let's see what this thing does. Okay, here we go. So ready? We're going to kick off GPT-4 and let this thing go. So here we go. It's now running. And you can see, this is why I call it the 2400 baud version, because you can kind of read it. And this is actually kind of fast for GPT-4 right now, but you can read this as it's dumping it out. Right now it's being a little speedy, which is nice. I have noticed, actually, in the past few days, GPT-4 has been peppier. I think that they have either added more comp compute power behind the scenes or dumbed it down so that it could deliver faster results to compete with Meta because Meta is getting so much attention right now. So I'm not sure which way. Uh, right now, it still seems smart enough like the code delivers is good. Now, here we go. We have full results, right? Now, I'm not going to go ahead and read all this, but I'll this will be in the video so you can go ahead and read this as you want. So I'll scroll kind of slow. But the important part of this is to see all the information that it gave and how quickly it wrote it out. So it took a while, but it gave me really in-depth information and gave me a nice little bit of code snippet here to do everything that I want to do, and then some notes. So now let's take this and run this in Claude. So Claude is the AI system from Anthropic. Now I'm doing this on the free version. This isn't the paid one, so I don't expect this to be as fast, but I really just wanted to introduce Claude and Anthropic so you guys can kind of know about another AI to play with. And it does a pretty good job at, at delivering results as well. So here we go. Now, one thing it does say is you can notice here, it says Claude does not have the ability to run the code that it generates yet. This is something that OpenAI's ChatGPT does really well, is you can tell it to generate a program and then run it internally and then deliver the results and it'll do the whole thing behind the scenes. So here we go. So now Claude's done, delivered nice results here. Um, now let's go over to Gemini. This is the one, man, Gemini just always gives me like not really the best results, but let's just see what happens. Again, we're really just focusing on speed. I'm not going into the details of what it's telling me to do here. But one of the bonuses that you're getting from this podcast is in the prompt that I've given. So if you are a Fordrock Identity Cloud person and you're looking to migrate backend apps, with the Identity Gateway, there is a header uh, configuration set that you can do to mar marshal the headers that deliver from when it comes in from the cloud to the backend app, and it can kind of act like a little mini orchestrator. So here we go, we have that, we have all the code. Okay, explanation, recommended for tuning. Cool, so it's giving me a lot of good stuff here. So now we're gonna do Meta's AI. So this is on Llama 3. 
here we go. So now watch, no, Meta, this is the 14.4 version. So what's interesting, now Llama 3 is running a little bit slower than I think it, than it used to. So it's probably because it has a lot more demand on it. And OpenAI has increased GPT-4 to be faster. So they're actually getting a little bit, they're, they're kind of meeting in the middle. Still way faster than GPT-4, as you can see, already done. Now, this is where I really wanted to get to, Grok. Grok is now running on their proprietary LPUs. And as you can see here in the top right, it's running Llama 3 as the LLM. So this is the exact same LLM as Meta's. And um, it has, uh, uh, screw it, I'm just gonna run it because this is just nuts. You ready? Here we go. And done. <laughs> it's insane. It did 900 tokens per second. It delivered the whole thing. Here we go. Here's the full results of what to do. Here's the script and everything. Here's the header transformation scripts to use. This is rad. So this is this Grok chat that you're seeing is the exact same AI backend that Meta AI is using. The only difference is the hardware that it's running on. So these LPUs that Grok is making are transformative in a massive sense. They've been getting a ton of hype online from all the AI enthusiasts, as you can see why. But what's really crazy is what's going to be how people are going to incorporate these things. Now, these LPU chip, these LPU chips that Grok is making are expensive. Not going to lie, you're not going to just go to run to Micro Center or Best Buy and pick one of these things up, or you know, buy one on Amazon. Although maybe you might be able to buy one on Amazon. I don't know, but um, these things go for like I think around like forty grand. So they are expensive. But if you are an enterprise and you want to build a local LLM that you own and host internally, that you have a rag on the side with all of your internal documentation and code that it uses so you don't actually have to find train your AI LLM against your personal data set, and it's all siloed so no one outside has access to it, and you put a Grok LPU on this thing, you can then develop unlimited applications to have real-time access and inference against these LLMs that are all trained or ragged against your data sets, all privately in your cloud or in your data center, not going to the outside network at all. So this is what's amazing to me is that I know every enterprise wants to have AI, but they're blocking it, right? You try to go to OpenAI or you try to go to MetaAI from within your company, it's blocked. Why? Because the companies do not want internal data pasted into these external models because that everything you paste in those models gets trained on, which means they keep it so it, that data could get spit out to other people when they ask questions similarly. So that's why it's really important that they block those from this. But they obviously they want to have the ability to have that power. So this is what's amazing. And this is what I'm really hoping that you guys understand. If you are an enterprise and you wish that you had the power of chat GPT internally to your company and trained on all of your internal data, but you wanted to have control over it and you can even fine tune it. So you can say these people in these department have access to this level of data. You can do that. We actually do that here at Nidus. We actually set up local LLMs within enterprises tied with your personal data we could even, if you want to buy the the Grok data, the Grok LPUs, we'll even help you hook that up. But we help enterprises build their own private AIs so you can leverage real time LLM without sharing your data externally. That is power that your competition will not have. And you don't need a thousand consultants to come in to do it. We can do it with one person in just a couple weeks. It's really not that difficult. So it's pretty awesome, but it's definitely because of a crap ton of smart people behind this thing figuring stuff out so check out grok groq.com it is amazing i'll see you guys around later hey everyone you going to identiverse this year may 28th and 29th in las vegas we're going to be there and we're going to make it awesome how we're having a scavenger hunt where you can win awesome prizes and cool fun stuff like an invite to our private party the way that you're going to find it is find these little poker chips all over the convention tap your phone to them and that's how you're going to start the scavenger hunt lots of cool prizes and not everyone's going to be able to make it hope you can do it i'll see you guys there later